Ow! Today's video will be about pen rests. You know, where to put your pens. I've loosely divided the pen rests into display and use. Display would be like to show off your pen, as opposed to use, which you would use if you wanted to quickly put a pen down or pick it up. I've got them in all price ranges along with a free one at the end. The first one we'll start off with is by a company called Anitoru. They're the ones that make the little plastic crab and cat pen holders you see all over social media. This one is made by them and it's either like a shrimp or a little lobster. And I would classify this pen rest more of a display pen rest. So I think it'd be kind of hard to quickly pick up a pen or set it down without flipping that little shrimp guy over. These run for a few dollars and I'll leave the website in the show notes. They also make this cat riding a mouse motorcycle. And you can take the cat off and rest your pen on it. It fits a variety of pens. This is a 149 and it's no problem at all. And here's my superhero picture of Mr. Shrimp. Next are pen trays made by Toyooka. These were for sale at Tips, but they have an online website you can order from. These are lightweight but sturdy pen trays made out of wood with flocked grooved inserts so that you can easily put down a pen and pick it back up. I would definitely consider this a use pen tray and utilize it quite often. They go to the San Francisco Pen Show every year and they also take special orders on their website. They also make a tiered three layer pen tray. I have this one on my desk to hold both dip pens and glass pens so I can easily test inks. I have my glass pens on the two lower levels with the flocked inserts and then various puddles and jars on the top level. You buy the flocked insert separately from the tray itself so you can decide your pen arrangement. And here I stuck a variety of pens on the lower level just to show you what it looks like. Because they are flocked, the pens don't really wiggle around or anything. Now let's go Lux and get Scaly. That's a dragon carved out of Chalcedony, by the way. The next pen rest is made by a company called Coppertist Wu. They make things out of copper, brass, and sterling silver. And they make a variety of novelty items, jewelry, keychains, and things like that. It's a really fun website. You need to check it out. And I think they ship all over the place. But if they don't, I believe they also have an Amazon uh, shop. This is a really cool striking snake pen rest made out of brass. This pen rest kind of bridges the gap between use and display pen stands. It of course makes a stunning display stand for your pens, but it also is sturdy enough that if you do kind of plop a pen on there pretty quick, it's not going to flip over or anything. The snake has over 2,000 handcrafted visible scales. You can see it's just incredibly detailed. And the rattle on the rattlesnake is made out of sterling silver. And even the underside has incredible detailing to include the Coppertist Wu insignia in purple brass. The eyes are handset zircon, and it holds a variety of pens, including this one called Flower from the Heinz Pen Company, and this chunky monster from Kasama Pens. And though it's made of sturdy brass, it can easily and gently hold a glass pen. This beautiful concoction of glass is Bungu Box's Cinderella's Slipper Glass Pen. Though it's one of my more fancy glass pens, it has an opal in the section, I have no problem putting it on this pen rest. As a matter of fact, I think it looks pretty cool, the kind of contrast there. This pen stand runs somewhere between $70 to $90, and I do have a discount code you can use in the show notes. I received this pen uh, rest for free, but I don't get any compensation for the code. 
I would check out their website and try to use the code or go over to Amazon to compare prices and shipping. And as you can see, this pen stand looks pretty cool, like in like a little dark corner somewhere holding a pen. And while I was filming, it's usually near a window, I just kind of had set the, the pen rest down on the floor and you can see it's just kind of striking just sitting there in an odd place. As an aside, they told me you could use the snake as an incense holder, you just stick it in its mouth. And I like incense and it's an opportunity to like light something on fire on camera. Make sure you have something that's not flammable underneath the length of the incense. I'm just using this plate. And then you light the end of the incense, let it catch on fire, and then blow it out. Up close, it looks like he's kind of smoking a cigar. It's pretty cool. A very affordable option are chopstick rests. You can get these at Asian import stores or online. Better yet, come out here to the Tokyo International Pen Show in November and you can pick up a few for a couple of dollars. This one's a cute one for all you dog lovers, a little bone and then a little puppy. And then depending on the type of chopstick rest, you can either lay it across the top or lean it against the side. And to give cat people equal amount of time, here's a cat one. These are surprisingly sturdy because they are made to plop chopsticks on. Next up is this elegant glass stand from Hanabi Glass. They make beautiful glass pens, pendants, and all kind of glass accessories. This stand is so well balanced that I one time put a pen in there where I didn't have them quite in between the grooves of the two balls there and it still stayed on just fine. While this pen looks beautiful on a normal wood background, where it really shines is on light backgrounds. It really makes a pen pop because it kind of blends in with the background and really lets the pen shine. It's really apparent with this light blue Leonardo here where normally I think a pen stand could take away from it. And yes, of course, it holds glass pens just great. That was a light background, but here you can see that same glass pen just pops here. And here you can see it holds a small pocket pen just fine. Hanabi Glass is in the show notes, and I'll be doing a glass pen giveaway from them in my upcoming video, Ink Play. Now let's go back to Toyooka. They have a couple odd little things that aren't quite pen trays, but are very useful as pen stands. This one holds one pen up vertical, and as you can see, it's made out of the same kind of wood as their pen trays. This one is holding a pink 3776. It can hold a variety of pen sizes. This is a Mont Blanc 149. It's pretty forgiving of the girth and length of a pen, but where you may run into the problem is that the base of the pen holder holds limited sizes of pens. Here you can see what holds the pen up on the bottom is this little groove. And though it will accommodate the flat end of this Namiki Impressions pen, it won't accommodate the flat end of this wall ever sharp. But I use it for a lot of pens, and if it's a little bit too fat or the bottom's too flat, I end up using this. It's meant to lay your pens flat, but notice the two grooves in the middle. Here I have the heavy, oversized wall ever sharp, and it's no problem for this pen stand. And those little grooves are made so that it's easier for you to pick up the pen. And this one is a combined pen rest and notepad holder. It's made by Toya Oka under the name Shinrigaku for the Marazen Bookstore. Here you can see the grooves on the left hand side to make it easier to pick up the pen. And the grooves on the top and the bottom of the pad holder so it makes it easier to pull up the pad and replace it. This is one of the cool reasons why I really like Toyooka. On the topic of wood rests, one of my favorite is this beautiful wood pen rest from Yoseka Stationery. It has this beautiful wood grain, it's very sturdy, and it has these grooves to hold your pens. And then on the back side, they have these little cloth bumpers to protect your tabletop. I consider this pen rest mainly for display. As you can see in this close up, the pens aren't going to quite lay inside the groove, and it just seems I'm always touching it, and the pens are kind of spinning around on it. So it just looks real good when you set it up 
and then you can kind of just display the pens. But because how it's made, you can make really interesting setups like this and put rocks on it or bottles of ink. So it's a very useful pen rest. Next up is probably my most used pen rest. This is the Shinati leather pen tray. It's basically leather over some cushioning and on the back side is kind of the suede thing to give it a little bit of a non-stick feeling on the top of your table. I really abuse this thing here. You can see it's pretty scuffed up and then the stitching on the side is just really tough. It also comes with like this extra leather covered bar. I don't really use it, but you can set it up to hold your pens the way you want to. It's made to be placed somewhere along in the tray like this. And also the top part, you can put like an ink bottle there. I don't normally mess with that though. So here it is set up with the extra little bar and if you wanted to elevate both pens. The leather kind of has a little bit of a texture so that it ends up gripping the pens. And here it is without the little extra bar and a glass pen. What I bought it for was when I wanted to test different inks with my glass pens. And you know how the, you still got a little bit of ink on your pen, but you don't want to clean it yet. You want to set it down somewhere and not have your glass pen roll off the table. And this is just real convenient. And I got it in this navy blue color because most inks I do test are in the blue color. And I just plop it on there and I really don't get that many drips of ink on there. It's turned out to be very useful. But what I've found, just having the tray on the table when I'm using my pens, I just kind of plop them there. And it doesn't matter if I've got a roll stop or a clip, I can just kind of corral the pens that I'm using there. So I just use this pen tray every day. Shinati can be bought on Tag Stationery's website and they ship overseas. Next up is probably going to bother a lot of people. So I'm going to put this trigger warning in here. <laughs> And if you're the type that gets upset about some of the stuff I do in my videos, you may want to skip the next two or three minutes. This is a dragon. And this dragon is on the side of a cup. I really use a lot of ink and a lot of pens. And well, sometimes I find it's just easiest to use a cup to throw my pens in. Now I'm not going to put some really high-end pen in here, but if I use a pen really often and it's kind of a workhorse like a lot of these parallels and kakunos and some opuses, well, I just kind of put them in a cup. Here's another dragon and it's a dragon cup and I have other pens in here and they tend to be my more sturdier pens and pens I just kind of whip out and use. But yeah, this is actually quite useful. I'm not a complete monster. I do line the bottom of the cup with some paper towels, so maybe that'll that'll soften things a bit. I also put some dip pens and some paint brushes and things of that nature in this glass with cherry blossoms painted on the side. I don't put them in and out of this glass, but I kind of just store it in there. When I'm actually using these utensils, I end up throwing them on my Shinati tray. Okay, we can go back to normal programming. And as I said earlier in the video, I do have a free pen rest. I don't normally post my pens and regularly just hold the cap in my left hand. I'm right-handed. And so I'm writing, writing, writing. And then if for some reason I need to think about something, instead of capping the pen, I just pop it right back into the cap. I don't screw it on or anything. I just pop it in there and then do my little thinking, pull the pen back out and continue writing. And what this does, it just kind of keeps the pen from rolling around and it keeps it from drying out. This is just a habit of mine and I do it all the time. The only time you may have a little bit of a hiccup, like in this Estherbrook Esty, there's an inner cap. And sometimes when you stick it back in, it gets kind of hung up on the inner cap. But that doesn't bother me and it doesn't hurt the pen. Hope you found this video useful and now I'm going to announce the winner of my last giveaway. The giveaway is this Madozen Special Edition Lamy Lemon Pen and the winner is Elephant Slay Eggs. Please contact me on Instagram. Congratulations. 
I took a long sabbatical due to some family emergencies, but now I'm back to making videos. And next week's video is going to be about Adventure Denali. See you next week.